Okay, so in just a moment we're going to learn how to configure a node, um, but before we do I thought it would be helpful to just get a look at uh, what it actually looks like. So right here, Ian, what is this little box? This is our tier 2 node. Um, this is brand new for us, so a lot of people have been worried about having, a, having to have a big Solaris box, which is what we have in our DMR tier 3 and MPTIP, having a big server, but this, this one's designed to be small, it's quiet, there's no fan inside of it, it's all solid state, it doesn't heat up, it's, it's a great little box and it costs a fraction of our other nodes. So I oh, mean I think great. all the things people have been worried about um, should go away. Now this thing, you could sit on your desk in your central, central uh, office, you know, it doesn't have to be rack mounted, so there's, there's lots of advantages to it. Okay, well let's go look at how to configure it. So as you can see up on the screen here, we are looking at a, a serious warning. So, uh, Ian, if I want to access the DMR Tier 2 node, how would I do that? So, so basically all you have to do is, is type in the IP address of the node into your browser and suddenly you can, you can use it. Now, as you can see, it tells people that it shouldn't be using it to go away, but for us, we're, we're going to head into the node. Now, with... Uh, all our systems, you do have to have a username and a login. So I've already set that up for the system. Um, so it's as simple as doing this. And now we're into the node. So this is your normal screen that you get when you enter a node. You can basically see the status of the system. So at the moment you can see we've got some alarms. This is because one of the consoles that, that was working on the system has been taken away. We had some demo consoles running on our system. Um, but you can see we've now got nodes and sites are up and working. So let's say I want to add another site onto the network. How would I do that using this interface? You just click on the site and now with the, the site screen. So this gives you all the configuration for the site. Now the first thing you need to do is add some channels to the site. So I'm just going to add a few channels here. Now I don't actually have a base station to use so I'll just pretend to use one at the moment. Um, it's pretty much as simple as this. Second part of this, all channels you assign a group to. So, well, first thing I'll show you. Okay, so this is this other side, and you see it's got two channel groups here: one, two, seven, one, two, five. So, if we wanted to hook this channel up on on the first site to the site we just created, go back to the other site, and we'd assign this channel by editing it. One, two, seven. Mm -hmm. And now any radio talking on, on this channel at this site should be heard by radios on the channel at the other side. All right, so next question. If I wanted to activate an AIS connection to a console, how would I do that? The step to activate a console, we look down here is what we have. It sits under telephony because um, all consoles are using SIP and that's what we use to connect up to telephone. So in a way to us, a, a console is almost like a phone connection. So you can see here we've got three consoles already connected to the system. Um, each console you see is assigned a channel group. So once again, this is the same channel group we used in, on the sites. So basically we can add another one. We might want to add another console. Um, John's console. And we say, well, we also want that guy to be on um, channel group 127. Now, with SIP, there's several different ways you can assign um, connections. So we're saying this is an AIS connection. So AIS is our protocol that we use to talk to consoles. It's mm -hmm. a, a DMR standard, so you should be able to use quite a few different vendors. Okay. Um, now, in order to allow them to access our system, we basically have to give them a username and password. So, some sort of username, some sort of password. Now, that's what they use when they hook up their console to our system. It will send a message with this username and password telling us who they are. And by that, we know then that they're allowed to use our system. So, um, that's basically all you have to do to add a console. Okay. And then if you want to save the configuration of the node, how do we save it, the configuration? Under files, come down here and look at backups. Now, by default, the node will back up a file into its own uh, file system every day. So we always have a backup there in case something goes wrong. You should be able to restore. But if you want to save one to your own folder, you can go up here and go backup, 
and it would have generated one. So this is one that's the latest, everything you've got. If you scroll down here, we see here's, here's this file saved there. Now if we click on that, you computer. can save it to your computer, and it's that easy. Now you can also, if we go back, if you go back, you can also restore. So you can upload a, a file from your computer. You'd go upload, select the file you wanted, which we didn't save before. Um, select a file. file. It will load it onto here, and then you just it's sort of two steps. One is to load it onto the node. The second one, you select it, and then you just click back up, and that will restore that that old um, database. Okay. And then last question: How do I properly end my session uh, working on this node? So this is pretty simple. Go to log out. Make sure you want to log out. And there you go, you're back to the... the okay, uh, thank you again, Ian, and um, that's all we have for now.